The shuttle's final launch is still on for now. NASA crews checked the launch pad this afternoon and found no damage from a severe storm that pounded the area today. The shuttle Atlantis is set to lift off tomorrow at 11.26 a.m. Our chief meteorologist, Glenn Burns, is live at the Kennedy Space Center for the historic launch. Glenn. It is certainly that, Monica, and all eyes focused on the weather for tomorrow. We had a lightning hit about 500 feet from the launch tower this afternoon. It hit a water tower, but no damage, and lightning is the main concern right now. In addition to that, they need 5,000 feet of visibility from the launch as the shuttle goes up into the atmosphere so they can actually track that. So, again, that low ceiling that we're having right now with the squally weather, another major concern. But the space shuttle is set to go off tomorrow, and it's had a history of resounding success like the International Space Station, and of course, you can take a look at the Hubble Space Telescope anytime. Now, the shuttle has also had a history of tragedy, it's had a history of persistence, and it's had a history of payoff. And it all began with Space Shuttle Columbia in April of 1981. 10, 9, 8. Columbia spent two days in space. What a way to come to California. A second shuttle, Challenger, joined the fleet. In June 1983, it carried Sally Ride, the first woman into space. And I think that it was, uh, of course, critically important that women be brought into the space program and that there be a first, a first woman. So I don't downplay the importance of my first flight at all. Two months later, Challenger carried Gian Bluford, the first African-American, into space. I think I, I probably told people that I would probably prefer not being in that role versus being in that role because I figured being the number two guy would be a lot more fun. NASA added two shuttles, Discovery, then Atlantis, the first shuttle with a glass cockpit. Then NASA picked Krista McAuliffe to be the first teacher into space. On an unusually cold January morning in 1986, the Challenger 7 planned to make history. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle But hot gases from the solid the rocket tower. boosters burned into the external fuel tank. It triggered tragedy and heartache around the world. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Challenger, go and throttle up. NASA regrouped, fixed the flaw. Lift off America. And in September of 1988, America bounced back on space shuttle Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. In February of 2003, the risk of space light caught up to us once again. And Columbia Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Space shuttle Columbia spent 16 days in space and was 16 minutes from home when it disintegrated in the skies over Texas. A piece of foam from the external fuel tank struck Columbia's wing when it launched, damaging the tiles that shielded from the heat of re-entry. The entire shuttle fleet was grounded. In 2004, President Bush ordered an end to the shuttle program. It would be phased out over the next seven years. The final wave of shuttle flights focused on building and stocking the International Space Station. Now in behind me, you're looking at the Vehicle Assembly Building, the VAB. It is so big, you can fit two and a half Empire State Buildings inside of it. And tremendous technology came out of there. Stuff we use every day, cordless screwdrivers, for example, personal computers. A lot of things spun off from the space program. And we're going to have more on that tonight on the Action News Night Beat at 11. Hope you can join us then. Until then, this is Glenn Burns here at Cape Kennedy for Channel 2 Action News. Ah, uh, and you never got to fly. What can we say? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, Glenn, thank you.